Today we are going to be discussing the development of polyphony during the Middle Ages. As you know, up until now, we have looked at Gregorian chant, which was essentially monophonic music with one voice. We looked at secular music during the Middle Ages. And again, this was probably essentially one voice. There might have been some sort of drone accompaniment in the background, but polyphony, as we know it, didn't start until around sometime between the years 700 and 900 AD. For centuries, Western music had been monophonic. And then sometime during this period, there was a great revolution in music. At least in Europe. One doesn't know in other parts of the world, but in Europe they had enjoyed Gregorian chant for centuries and centuries and simple secular music with one voice. But then the monks decided to make things more interesting. The monastery choirs began to add a second, a second voice to their singing. This was highly revolutionary at the time. And this second voice, they didn't exactly have a clear purpose. It was just there to, to enrich the music, to, to stretch it out a bit. This was known as organum. Now this organum might well have consisted of a voice a fifth above or a fourth above singing note for note. And quite possibly our aversion to parallel fifths might actually stem from this particular practice. There's even a theory that they didn't realize they were singing a fifth above. It just happened naturally. This might relate to the overtone series in which the first overtone in the overtone series is the fifth. But somehow they were drawn to this very stable interval of a fifth, which is why to this day we call the interval of the perfect fifth a perfect fifth and the fourth is a perfect fourth. They didn't consider thirds and sixths to be consonances in, in, in the true sense. They actually saw them as being dissonances and they only added them in much later. But as we, as we mentioned, this organum, the second voice, essentially duplicated the voice at the bottom, note for note. There was no rhythmic independence. However, sometime between the year 900 and 1200, music became genuinely polyphonic. Around 1100, they started to actually take an interest in the rhythmic independence of the second voice. They might have had a slow moving primary voice at the bottom, and the second voice, the, the organum, could have moved in much faster notes. Not much faster, perhaps the bottom notes were in semi breves or breves, and the, the upper voice may have been in quavers or clutches. Now, in, in 1150, this was a defining year, in Paris, there emerged the Notre Dame School. There were two great composers from this school, Leonin and Perrotin. They comprised the Notre Dame School of Composition. They were revolutionary. They, they tried to develop rhythmic innovations. Now, for the first time in music, there was a clearly defined rhythm and meter. And they experimented with this. They recorded this. And they are the first known composers that we know of by name in music history. So, Leonin and Perrotin. And again, at that stage, there might have been two voices, but they didn't really have triads. And as I mentioned previously, they saw the interval of a third as being basically a dissonance, not a stable interval. And indeed, it's not a truly stable interval. If one listens to the interval of a third, there's a bit of a buzz. It doesn't sit there in a, in a stable sense on the overtone series. So we've got that. But later on, they want you to enrich these very bland fifths and fourths or at least the fifth, so they added in the third and created a fuller triad, at least to our ears. So a lot of credit is owed to Leonin and Pevitin of the Notre Dame School of, of Composition in Paris for the introduction of true independent polyphony in the 1100s, the late 1100s. And uh, this is what we're going to explore in this lecture. We're going to look at an example. Vedarunt Omnes is a gradual for Christmas Day it was elaborated polyphonically by Leonin and Perrotin. It features two different styles of polyphony, organum and discant. Only the solo portions of the chant, the intonation of the respond and most of the verse, 
were sung polyphonically. The choir sang the remaining portions in unison so that three styles, plainchant, organum, and a discant, were heard side by side. The opening intonation on Vidivunt is an example of organum style. The chant melody appears in the tenor in unmeasured long notes like a series of drones. Over these sustained tones, the upper voice, called the duplum, sings decorative melisma and cadences at irregular intervals on the fifth octave or unison. Most of this passage is in organum style, but it is punctuated by passages in discant style where both voices move in modal rhythm. The longest discant passage is on the syllable DO of Dominus. As in organum, phrases end on a unison, fifth or octave.
Du hast die 